My name is Jonathan Powell and I'm a trustee of the Natural Beekeeping Trust. Uh, I've been working with bees since I was a child and I was taught by my grandfather. He kept bees uh, in 1930 and in the 70s he taught me how to keep bees and um, I've been keeping bees on and off since then. I have a real strong interest in bees in the heart of trees. Over the last hundred years, the bees have moved so far away from their natural home. The bees like to be high up, we put them close to the ground. The bees like to not be disturbed, and yet we disturb them all the time as beekeepers. The bees are not used to being treated with chemicals, and yet we use chemicals to treat the bees. The bees like a low humidity atmosphere, yet we put them close to the ground with high humidity. There are so many things about bees and trees which can inform our beekeeping. And I think it's a really important part of beekeeping that we now get back to the roots, get back to where the bees want to be. And that is why I believe in tree beekeeping and I think it is one of the most important aspects of beekeeping for the environment that we live in today. My name is Betty Schiel. I come from Bochum, from the rural area, industrialized area. Uh, and I work together with an association called 2010 Queens for <laughs> Queen Bees for the War. <laughs> um, I, uh, I am a gardener, I have a very large garden and at some point I realized that I have loads of bumblebees, loads of insects, but I didn't see any honeybees in my garden and trying to investigate a little bit what that is all about and um, people were telling me there are not enough beekeepers and I learned actually about the problems of the bees in our environment and the ecological situation that we created with, within the agriculture. Um, and so I started to have bees in the garden, I had my first hive, was sitting in front of that hive for hours and hours and hours and watching the bees flying in and out and becoming really interested into this. And I'm, I'm, so I'm learning more about bees for, I don't know, 10 years now. And um, at some point I understood that bees belong into the heart of the trees. They, uh, this is where they initially were living and that's, that's where they need to go back to. And um, so I, 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 I discovered, um, actually not long time ago, um, tree beekeeping. And now um, I do the best. We, we started to have the first uh, tree actually with bees in the war in Essen. We created one. And we will go on with that project and uh, I hope and my biggest dream is that the bees can sustain themselves one day. That I can just stand under the tree and look up at them, at this big miracle. My name is Przemek Nawrocki. I am from Poland, from WWF Poland. I was always fascinated by uh, tree beekeeping, this uh, lost tradition, uh, and um, my dream was uh, uh, to see it one day alive. Uh, I didn't believe that uh, it will be possible to find uh, alive tree beekeepers, but uh, when I met uh, people who are uh, tree beekeepers, uh, uh, who are uh, taught by their fathers, like it used to be in Poland and in Germany and other countries, uh, I realized that it's possible to bring this unique uh, knowledge to Europe. And that is how it happened, this tree beekeeping restoration in Poland and now in uh, Germany and in Switzerland and I hope in many other countries. And the UK. <laughs> and the UK too, of course. And the States. Well, all over the world where bees are. <laughs> So, what does it mean, bees in the heart of trees, to you? It means that uh, forest uh, can uh, get back a lost piece of very important uh, biodiversity. 
That means bees uh, who are forest animals. We think about bees living next to humans, but in reality, bees were wild animals living in forests. So forests can have uh, that what was lost because wild bees are gone. So we can bring uh, bees back to the forest. Bees will have much better, uh, happier life than uh, in regular tree hives. And also, tree beekeeping, uh, bees in heart of tree, means that this tree will be sort of sacred tree. Nobody will uh, cut this tree. This tree can, uh, uh, can be alive as long as it will die uh, accordingly to if its uh, own uh, life cycle. It will not be killed. So that is chance uh, for big trees to, to stay in, in the forest uh, for centuries. I'm Heinz Risse. I'm based in Berlin, in the heart of Berlin, in Berlin-Kreuzberg. And I've established a Melifera regional group in Berlin. So I came to the base because my father had base. I was a young boy and I helped him with the base because the base were swarming and I helped him catching the swarms. I also got into it, into the bees, but I did not have own bees. So now I have own bees and my intention is to give bees a voice. And that's why I would like to support the tree hive beekeeping. Bees in the heart of trees means to me that bees are treated in a way that they are able to survive better survive than before because we don't treat them right and with, within the heart of a tree they feel much better than in other hives, in other boxes they're used to live right now with traditional and with modern beekeeping. My name is Michael Joschen Thiele and I grew up on a tiny little farm and had some experience with bees back then. But then later on, many years later, uh, there was one winter with lots of dreams about bees and the following spring then a swarm of bees literally came to my house and moved into a box behind my house. And that was the beginning of my life with bees. Well, one, one question I do have, among many others, is that of who we really are as Zeitlers. Who are we? Who are we as Zeitlers? In the 21st century, where as Zeitlers, we could say, we are palpating the pulse of life and we are also exposed to the great matters which are life and death. And how, how do we navigate this boundless territory um, living with Apis mellifera, living with Apis arboreal, our sister being, our ally from beginningless time. I believe as Zeitlers, we are, uh, one of our roles is to serve, to be the servant of Apis Arboreal through this gesture of returning her to her natural habitat, by returning her to the heart of the trees. The Zeitler, a voice of an ancient tradition on one side. On the other, the Zeitler, a voice of a new era, 
a voice which is still in the becoming as we enter a, a very different epoch of life and we are right there now the the art and the craft of the Epiarian way enables us to explore the multidimensional ways of being and of being in the world. That Seidler is an opportunity for us to bring the wisdom of Apis Mellifera into the world. So we could say we are messengers because the world is in such need for inspiration to find new ways of being together on this earth to be a part of the global biosphere. Many things depend on it and I believe that Seidler can play a very important role in that. So it's a beautiful gesture we are all following. My name is Andre Wärmelinger. Uh, I'm a tree beekeeper and I live in Switzerland in a beautiful spot. It's called Fribourg Montevra, some 900 meters over sea level. What led me to the bees? Uh, I began and I wanted to create or to produce my own honey for my own uh, needs. And what I saw was a lot of mismanagement within the tree or within the beekeeping. And I had a look for alternatives and I found uh, tree beekeeping. Uh, tree beekeeping is, some, uh, is having bees in the heart of the tree. And the heart of the tree means uh, its natural habitat and uh, bees live in trees, they have always lived in trees for thir more than 30 of millions of years and uh, the tree is somehow the, the most natural habitat where you can have bees in terms of uh, moisture, in terms of temperature and it's the best place for having bees. Mein Name ist Norbert Pöblau, ich bin Imkermeister bei Melifera e.V. und kümmere mich um die Bienen von dem ganzen Verein. Äh, Im Moment so zwischen 150 und 200 Bienenvölker in ganz, ganz vielen verschiedenen Beutensystemen, äh, wo ich auch gerne rum experimentiere. Äh, wie bin ich zu den Bienen gekommen? Ich bin zu den Bienen gekommen äh, eigentlich als na, Zwölfjähriger, der mal einen Schwarm im Strauch hängen hat sehen und äh, total fasziniert war und sich dann überlegt hat, äh, wie kann das denn eventuell in einem Bienenkasten und der Beobachtung weitergehen. Damals habe ich mich noch nicht getraut und äh, in der Zwischenzeit gab es einen Schritt, wo ich mich dann getraut habe. Und jetzt praktiziere ich Imkerei eigentlich seit ja, mehr als 20 Jahren. Ja. Äh, Bienen im Herzen der Bäume. Ähm, das ist aus meiner Sicht etwas, wo Bienen hingehören, wo sie auf jeden Fall heute noch vorkommen sollten, leider meistens nicht mehr vorkommen. Und ich finde es ein total spannendes Thema, äh, da nochmal genauer hinzugucken, was läuft denn eigentlich im Naturzusammenhang äh, zwischen den Völkern, innerhalb des einzelnen Volkes, äh, bei den Einzelbienen im Naturzusammenhang. Ich merke auch in diesen 20 Jahren, dass ich eigentlich immer noch von den Bienen ganz, ganz viel lerne und hoffe, die Zusammenhänge so zu verstehen, dass ich alle Welt redet von Bienen retten, dass ich für die Bienen mehr tun kann. Ja, das sind so meine Visionen.